welcome to another lecture on this uh, course on modeling and simulation of communication systems using matlab and till now we have discussed the various data types used in matlab and uh, done some basic uh, matlab commands today we will discuss about what are scripts or what are matlab scripts and uh, they are helpful to us so till now what we have done is that we, we have entered individual commands into the matlab command window and uh, seen uh, the effects we have obviously used uh, the copious amounts of help or uh, that matlab offers but uh, our focus has mainly been on entering individual commands and uh, looking at uh, what output does uh, one command give us so uh, this approach is good if we so so this approach of using single commands is good if we want simple calculations like uh, say suppose i enter the radius of a circle i want its area yes i want its circumference yes short calculations nothing much or you want to solve for the roots of a quadratic those kinds of things so you can enter the commands or uh, simple calculations you want to know that uh, okay what is the run rate required for the current team for what's the current run rate you can just throw in the number or you can say that okay in this semester if i score uh, all tens then how much uh, my cpi would or cgpa would uh, go up uh, so random calculations as well so you can do all of that uh, using the command window but uh, say you want uh, some intricate calculations you want to do your taxes for example uh, don't rely on matlab for taxes that's a pro advice side advice actually so yes you want some complicated calculation you want to do some scientific calculation that involves multiple steps you want to calculate uh, a fraction you want to do anything more complicated than uh, two step calculations you cannot uh, expect to enter all of that one by one in matlab or you want to do it repeatedly say you want uh, to enter some 10 numbers and you want to do the same steps on those numbers again and again one example there are uh, obviously more complicated examples that uh, we'll get into as we get through this course but the idea is that uh, now from single one or two commands we want to move on to uh, some more complicated commands or uh, more complicated programming so the answer to that so you don't want uh, the interpreter to type so we must remember that matlab is an interpreter so you don't want uh, to individually interpret all of those lines one by one again and again so as a solution we have scripts or script files so in colloquial terms a script basically refers to what the actors are supposed to do in any situation be it a drama a television serial a movie whatever so similarly here a script tells the one step after another that is the basic idea of a script so based on this so a script a matlab script can be a script hence be used to automate series of steps or a series of that must be series of matlab commands that must be executed one after another so now let us consider a simple example let us write a script to input two numbers and print their sum so all matlab scripts this is this i should note here we should note that 
all MATLAB scripts are saved as plain text files with extension dot m. So all MATLAB files are saved with an extension dot m. So let us consider an example. Let us write a script to input two numbers and print their sum. So we will keep these annotations and I will open MATLAB. MATLAB is open. So I have uh, examples here, but uh, let us create a new script. So let me click here. I can create a new script like this by clicking on this and it opens the editor window or I can press control N on my keyboard and it will create a new script for me. So let us say, let us add a comment that in scripts this percentage, uh, the percentage symbol is used for adding comments. So let us say this is our first this is our first script. So let us, uh, before we add two numbers, let us do something simpler. Let us display hello world. So let us first tell, so the script to display when you learn any programming language, one of the first programs that you write is this hello world. So let us uh, conform to that norm and uh, let us try to run our first program. So and con pressing control S would uh, open or open the save box. You can save your script here and let us say that I want to save this script as first script. It is uh, always advisable to not use spaces in the file names of scripts. So, Whenever you are writing a script, you can uh, use underscores for separators, but uh, uh, avoid using spaces as much as possible. You can obviously use them, but uh, then it becomes harder to execute those files. So now, once you have written this, you can click on this run button and hello world is displayed in the command window. Alternatively, you can press F5 on your keyboard and hello world will be displayed. Another way of uh, writing a script or another way of executing a script is, so I clear the command window, you can enter its, uh, enter its name in the command window and if it is in the current folder, the script would execute. So there are three ways to uh, execute a script. So now let us do what we wanted to. Let us input two numbers. Now let us input two numbers and print their sum. So now let us input two numbers and print their sum. That is what we wanted to do. So x, we write normal MATLAB commands, nothing special. Input please x. display x is, so we need to concatenate this as an array. So let me write it like this, x is, num, so this num to str, this command basically converts a number, a floating point number or a, an integer to a string. And uh, you can see that it also allows you to convert the precision, but uh, we won't use that precision argument here. X, comma, Y is this.
So, x is this, y is this and the sum is this. So, say x is 2, so, so this malfunctioned, let us say x is 2, y is 5, x is 2, y is 5 and the sum is 7. So, uh, I need to add a space here, I need to add a space here to make this right and let me run it again, x is 2, enter y is 6, x is 2, y is 6 and the sum is this and uh, for completeness, let me add a full stop here. So, this makes this sentence grammatically correct and this, but uh, this looks odd if I write it. So, I, let me comment this hello world out and uh, say I want uh, to clear the command window whenever I run this script. So, what I the first thing I would do here is enter that clc command. So, every time I run this script the command window will be cleared. Now, if I run this script please enter x 3, 5 x is 3, y is 5 and the sum is 8. So, I, this is uh, our first script. You can obviously make uh, MATLAB do whatever you want using uh, simple scripts. So, you can uh, obviously go back to your uh, 101 level uh, programming courses and uh, make MATLAB do all sorts of fun stuff. You can uh, enter the student's name, enter student's uh, marks and uh, uh, those kinds of things. So, uh, we won't go into those but we will continue now and uh, move on to the flow of control. So, moving on to the flow of control, we have seen that uh, MATLAB scripts or these scripts sequentially execute statements. So, if you have 10 statements written one after another, they will first execute the first statement, then the second statement and so on. But what if you want to execute statements based on uh, what you have? or say you want to display an error, you want to calculate uh, the temperature or you, you are entering the temperature of something and uh, say a furnace or something like that and whenever you see an exceptionally high temperature or exceptionally low temperature, you want to raise a warning. What do you, you do? You obviously want to jump to a part of a program that uh, takes care of uh, erroneous values or such values. So, not erroneous values, but uh, values that are not uh, good, so or not uh, within some range or, or you want uh, conditioning means you want uh, to execute certain statements only when a certain condition is met. So, to address that uh, we have, uh, so that makes our life slightly more complicated and uh, we now have to manage the flow of control or uh, the flow in which the program runs. Obviously you would have done these statements in your basic programming courses, but for completeness we will cover these. So, uh, we will cover two forms of flow of control, decisions and loops. So, a decision basically corresponds to execute statement if a is met and a loop is we execute set of statements means if a condition is met execute same set of statements repeatedly as long as certain condition is met. Execute the same set of statements repeatedly as long as a certain condition is met. These are the two varieties of uh, control flow in MATLAB. So, let us look at uh, these in detail. So, for decision we look at the if statement. We look at uh, the while 
and for loops. The, uh, naturally, is the switch case statement as well, which uh, is there, but uh, we won't cover that. There is the go to statement that is there. We won't cover that. So we'll uh, keep life simple over here. And because if for and while are the most used, and there's do while as well, so we won't look at do while. We won't look at go to, or we won't look at the switch case. We'll uh, use the most commonly, or we'll discuss the most commonly used control statements that are if, while and for. So, this is let me correct myself. So, the if statement, the simplest decision. So, let us first look at, uh, oh, this is a, if is the simplest case. So, all decisions boil down to if. So, check for a condition and uh, do something if the condition is met. This is what the if statement is. Now, the syntax for if is if condition do this end. So, this is the syntax for if. Let me give an example to for this and this condition one thing that we should know here is that uh, this condition over here that we are talking about this condition this has to be a logical variable or binary valued so basically what is done in matlab is that or what is done in all programming languages is that this condition is a logical statement that returns a logical as output. The if statement checks whether the return logical is 1 and does and executes the underlying set of statements and executes the underlying set of, I will rewrite it. So now another thing, I have used the phrase the set of statements, set of statements a lot, but it is easier to use. So the word, so I will define another word here, subroutine or so basically we will use this in this course. So subroutine is actually uh, there is a slight technical difference, but uh, or this is not the precise definition of a subroutine, but uh, set of statements so a subroutine is basically a set of a separate set of statements so I will use this word interchangeably with. So, a program was earlier called a routine or in earlier days of pro computer programming in the late 80s, not those were not the earlier days, but yeah. in the late 80s and early 90s, a program was called a routine. So, a sub program, a part that uh, a part of program that was to be executed uh, separately was called a subroutine. So, uh, we will use this uh, phrase for or we will use this word for a set of statements that we want to execute. So, now let us look at uh, a simple example of if in a script. So, let us create a new script say we will demonstrate the use of if this script. We will demonstrate the use of the if statement or write it properly. If statement, we will demonstrate the use of the if statement in this script. So, 
in order to do this let us start so say I enter a number so copy this from here say let us enter a number x please enter number and uh, say I want uh, to check whether this number the user has entered is odd or even or uh, in days of high pollution will that uh, car be allowed on the road or not. So let us say so if x or remainder x comma 2 0 display So, let me demonstrate uh, so if example so let me call this if example and uh, let me demonstrate the remainder statement first. So, remainder uh, 3 comma 2 basically gives you the remainder that you get uh, upon dividing say 14 comma 4 so 2. So, remainder that you will get on integer division of the first argument with the second argument. So, let us try to run this script control s and run. So, please enter a number say let me enter 31 and nothing happens, but if I entered 32 I will get the number that you entered is even. So, here is a catch what what is happening is that it is telling me when the number is even, but it is not telling me when the number is odd what I can do here is. 1 and this will 31 and the number that you entered is odd if I run it again 32 the num nothing happens. But uh, what I want to do is that or I want that uh, it should tell me that uh, the number is odd or even o all times it should not be that I run I have it tells me only when the number is odd or only when the number is even. So, a naive way of doing it would be writing another if statement and saying that uh, I write another if statement and uh, say that uh, repeat this thing and I will be happy, but uh, that is um, inefficient coding or uh, that would be inefficient. So, what I say that is that uh, ok check if this is true, but uh, if this is not true then else if this is not true then so simple this happens let us see what happens when we execute this so, save and run so please enter a number 42 the number that you entered is even example 11 the number that you entered is odd. So, else helps me do this. So, here is another hack actually or another trick that we can play in uh, this specific case. So, or uh, this is only for the cases. So, um, I should create another slide and uh, write it over there rather than new slide. So, yeah. the idea is that in case we have an if statement that checks the equality of something with 0, then we need not use that equal to equal to 0 explicitly in the code and safely omit it. So, let me demonstrate this actually this will be better understood by our demonstration. So, let us say that uh, you want to check it. So, you want to do this. So, if I remove this then it will 
check the remainder or it will convert the remainder to a logical variable. So, the nice thing about logicals is a 0 integer or a 0 double is always mapped to a 0 logical and a non-zero integer or non-zero double is always mapped to a logical 1. So, I will write this on the slide that or this should be mentioned that this is because MATLAB automatically typecasts the input to the if statement as a logical and this typecasting returns a 0 if input integer or float is 0 and returns a 1 if the input integer float or integer or double precision float because MATLAB by default stores everything as a double precision number is non as simple as that. So, this so now let us try this on MATLAB. So, we have already coded it. So, remainder x comma 2. So, say 31. So, if the remainder is 1, 32 the remainder will be 0 and this. So, this is a slight shortcut that uh, you guys might use eventually. So, uh, so this is about the if statement. So, let us now move on to the second control statement which is the while statement or the while loop. So, the while loop works that uh, this is a loop. So, it executes the same set of statements or the same subroutine again and again as long as a condition is met. So, you basically also check change the condition within the subroutine. So, uh, one uh, popular bug that you can create or one common bug that you can create is while 1. So, this always uh, keeps on running. So, this also takes a logical as an input. So, this is a loop it uh, runs uh, repeatedly. So, let us uh, give an example or uh, let us execute this in MATLAB. So, I will create a new file. So, this is the example of a while loop. So, actually I have this file saved. So, let me retrieve this so, date modified. So, I'll copy these files and I will paste them in the example directory and paste. So, I, I pasted these files in the example directory. So, I have written this as example while. So, this is a demo of the while loop. So, actually let me do this again. So, we want to write two integers using the while loop or we want to or we want what we want to do here is More specifically, we want to generate the and the of two integers using the while loop. Fine. So let us clear the command window and let us clear all the variables that we had. 
So it's also a good practice to clear the variables that you will be using in a script before you start that script. Uh, general practice is clearing all the variables that there are. So clear all and uh, there is another statement called close all that I am writing here and uh, you will know eventually what this statement means. But uh, so like uh, C++ has a header, uh, we use the CLC clear all and close all generally in MATLAB scripts as a uh, uh, header or uh, these are the most common ways to, these commands are the most common starts to uh, any script file. So now we want to divide two integers using a while loop. So this is a poor execution of the division algorithm, but still this is a good demonstration. So a division operation consists of two parts, a divisor and a dividend. A divisor is uh, what uh, divides or uh, what we write in the denominator and uh, the dividend is uh, what is uh, being divided, fine. So, and there is a quotient and the remainder. So, let me call the x as the divisor. So, let us call x as the and y as dividend. The is q and is the largest multiple of x less than or equal to y and the remainder is the the dividend and the quotient and the remainder is the difference between the dividend and the quotient. So let us say x equals, so let me copy this from here, x in because we have used these terms a lot, so let us copy this from here and so now we want to iteratively compute the quotient. So let us say I initialize the quotient to 0 because uh, unless I know what multiplier works, I initialize the quotient to 0 and there is another counter that I initialize to 0 or there is another, I will also initialize the remainder to 0. Uh, Let us do it slightly differently from what the code there is. So while y minus q is greater than x. So what I am doing is y minus q times x is greater. So while y minus q times x is greater than x. So basically what I am saying is that uh, let us write this end over here. So, why as we defined that the quotient is the largest possible or quotient q is the largest multiple or the largest multiplier plier of x that yields a value, largest multiplier of x that yields a value less than or equal to y and the remainder is the difference between the dividend and, sorry, my, excuse my spelling over here and we do not need the remainder over here. So while y minus q times x is greater than x, so while the quotient times the divisor is less than the dividend, execute this or you can say, you can simplify this while statement. while. is less than y q equals q plus 1. Increment the quotient by 1 as long as it is 1, but we have to be careful that here at the last step when the quotient becomes uh, or uh, when this statement, so we have to be careful that this is strictly or this is less than or equal to. By introducing this less than or equal to, we ensure that uh, this statement 
is not met only when or by including this less than or equal to we have we have ensured that this statement will not be true or this statement will be true even when uh, quotient times x or quotient times the divisor is equal to y which means that uh, at the last step before it becomes greater and this q or the quotient will be updated. So, in the last step what we will have to do is that uh, we will have to equals. So, we will subtract 1 from the quotient that will give us the true quotient and remainder is q y minus q times x. So, this and let us run this. So, enter the devices say the divisor is 3, the dividend is 14 and run. So, these are the values. So, let us actually let us display these values as well directly. So, divisor is 3, dividend is 14 and the quotient is 4, the remainder is 2 which is straightforward. Let us do something more complicated say 395, dividend is 5 this will not give me anything, but uh, 5 and 35, the quotient is 7 and the remainder is 5. So, uh, this is an example of the while loop. The next thing that uh, we will cover is the for loop. So, the for loop is quite similar to the while loop, but uh, a for loop basically what a for loop does, I will add a slide over here and illustrate. So, for, so I should write this before I go into, so a for loop. So, before understanding the for loop or before looking at the for loop, we will introduce two new terms that are known as the iterable and the iterator. So, an iterable is a list or an object basically you will have to go into some more or uh, the definition of this word object is uh, beyond the scope of this course, but uh, you can say that it is a list roughly uh, in canonical or in colloquial terms. This is uh, a list or a table or a set from which the for statement can take one item at a time until no more items remain. So, what the for statement does that uh, you give the for statement. So, I will add a new slide over here and explain this. So, basically what the for statement does is you give the for statement statement a list or a set known as an iterable and the for statement will pick one element from this list at a time. assign it to what is known as the iterator. So, iterator used behind the scenes to get each item until there are no more items to process. Assign it to what is known as the iterator and perform operations on the iterator until and move on to the next item in the iterable until no items are left in the So, this sounds complicated I understand, but uh, the execution is uh, much simpler. So, what the for statement does is you give it a list, it will pick one item from that list, perform some manipulation on that or process that, move on to the next item in the list. 
So, it becomes clearer when we have an example. So, thankfully, we have a ready script for for that uh, I will execute now. So, clear screen. So, basically, this is an example for for. I will just add comments over here. Is an example of the for loop. Here, this x is the variable and i is the i is the iterate and uh, the for loop will basically take one item of i at a time and process it this i is the iterable or i could have directly declared the iterable to be this list So, this list i is the iterable so this or this array will come to an array in another few lectures this array i is the iterable. So, and what the for loop will do is this it will take one item from this i at a time and process it. So, what we will do is we will display the square of each element one by one. So, I will run this and this. So, this basically simply lists out the square of uh, each element of uh, the iterable list. So, this is what you could do with the for loop. We will obviously discussion goes beyond the scope of the current lecture and uh, we will continue this discussion on the for loop in the next lecture. So, uh, thank you for now. Mm -hmm.